your name? My name is Rory. My pronouns are they, them, but I also don't care if you mess up. Um, I don't really have a favorite flower. There are too many. And also, I like trees, just plants in general. Um, so I don't know how to take care of them. So. <laughs> Glad you're here. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite tree? Um, the ones I can climb. There you mm -hmm. go. All right. That's a good category. <laughs> All right. Andreas? Hi, guys. My name is Andreas. I grew up in Cardinal School. Pretty much better than most people. No rats. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> The orange one? Yeah, the marigold. Um, we don't have any marigolds on here, but marigolds are awesome. It has marigold color. Yeah. All right, Nick. <laughs> do you want to come back to you? My favorite flower is waffle. This waffle flower. <laughs> How about syrup? Do you know where syrup comes from? Depends. Tree. Maple tree? Maples? Clover syrup. Wait, no, it was clover honey. Honey, yeah. There you go. Clover honey is awesome. All right. What is your name? Julian? Julian, yes. Great name. I'm going to eighth grade, and I go to Sunnyside Environmental School by Seven Street, and I don't think it's here, but one of my favorite flowers is the buttercup. Oh, nice. How does it go into an environmental school? You probably learn a lot about plants and flowers there. Yeah. Well, if you have any um, facts or tips to share with us, I'd love to hear them. Okay. Cool. All right. Last but not least. Hello, my name is Simone. I'm going to 10th grade. And I don't have a favorite flower. Any in front of you that speak to you? No. <laughs> I don't think flowers are supposed to be hot. Well. <laughs> If you listen really carefully, you can hear you can hear them. Do the right drugs, you'll hear them. <laughs> All right. So today we're gonna learn. All right, everybody. Today we're gonna learn about the parts of a flower, and also about flower. Um, I'm sorry, plant um, families. So plants fit into different categories. Um, basically derived from a single plant. So they've kind of evolved over the centuries, years, um, to be diversified. But they kind of, you can organize them by, the, by a common family. And if we know that, then we know a lot more about their care and about mm -hmm. what they'll do and about like the insects that like them or how we can prepare them to eat them. So um, it's pretty interesting to learn about plant families for that reason. Um, does anyone know about the parts of a flower and how flowers go from becoming a flower to becoming a seed? I'm sure you've learned a lot of those kinds of things in elementary school and stuff, but we're going to talk a little bit about them in a little more specialized way. So um, most flowers have petals, um, which is kind of like what attracts insects and whatnot to them. Well, backing up a little bit, plants didn't used to flower, like back in back early, in early time, yeah, back in the day, dinosaur days, um, plants didn't have flowers. Plants and insects evolved together to produce flowers um, to attract each other so that they can produce seeds. So it's kind of an interesting um, evolution that both of them made at the same time. Um, <coughs> other this one? yeah okay so flowering plants produce pollen um, and then they have a reproductive system which basically um, where an insect will or wind or other pollination devices will um, get pollen from the the um, anthers over to a stigma or the stamen 
Um, so some plants can produce pollen and pollinate themselves, and some plants they have to have an insect carry the pollen to another plant in order to make a seed. Um, and just like humans, there's um, ovaries and uh, ovules, and that's where seeds are created. Um, yeah, it's hard to, this is kind of a complicated diagram. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, once the plant is pollinated, the seed can form, and most of the fruit and fruits and vegetables we eat um, are formed from a pollinated flower. Um, the exception to that is like lettuce and kale and things like that where we're eating the leaves, but otherwise, if we're eating like a tomato or a squash, that is actually the fruit um, that was formed after a flower was pollinated. Apples? Yeah, apples too. Pretty much anything you can think of. Does anyone know the difference between a fruit and a vegetable? Yes, Salvador? Uh, different textures and flavors. That is true. We're How about you, about Rory? Whether the seeds are on the outside or inside. Totally, yep. So fruits actually are, have seeds on the inside. So things like pumpkins and squash and tomato, those are actually fruits, even though we call them vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, vegetables. We typically call things vegetables when they're not sugary and fruits when they are, but that isn't really the right categorization. Yeah, strawberry is a vegetable. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Strawberry is not a vegetable. That is true because the seeds are on the outside, but it's actually yeah. a fruit. That's kind of That's one of the carrot. exceptions. But It's like the flower plates of plants. I still believe mm -hmm. There's always an exception. We can categorize things as much as we can, but there's always exceptions to the rule. I still believe that the squash is a vegetable. I do too, but it's not. <laughs> My mom is saying that it's a vegetable. I even looked it up and it's a vegetable. Well, yeah, depending on if you look up a botanical source or if you look up, I don't know, people will say different things. So here's a quick um, different parts of the flower. So the pistil, which is the center long part, is made up of the stigma and style and ovary. Um, then we have the sepal, sepal? <laughs> I never said that out loud. Sepal, which um, protects the flower. Um, the ovule is where we're producing the seeds. Um, and then the filament anther, which creates the stamen, is where the pollen is produced. So that's these little yellow guys here. Um, and then petals are usually bright and attractive to make, to kind of attract insects in there. And insects can actually see different color wavelengths than we do. So if you looked at a petal from the perspective of an insect, um, certain insects are attracted to certain flowers because of the colors that they are seeing. So um, butterflies actually see crazy patterns and colors in flowers that we don't even see, and that's how they're able to find them when they're flying around. Okay, do you want to take over from here? Sure. I skipped over <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, so there are different plant families. Um, there's a couple of different flowers all along your little table that are in different plant families. Um, categorized by like the, num the number of petals and stamens that we just went over. Um, so some of the ones we're going to go over are the mint family, the parsley family, the mustard family, pea, rose, and aster family. Um, so first is the mint family. Um, can anyone see one on the table that is um, in the mint family? The mint family has four petals, six stamens. They might not be flowering right now, the but they are um, all edible. Oh wait, sorry. They, um, they have square stalks and opposite leaves and they're usually very aromatic. Yes. Those are both one. Do you know what plant that is? You can probably smell it. Yeah, can you smell? There you go. Yeah, you got one too. Can you feel the square stem? Like when you roll the stem in your fingers, you feel how it has like squared sides. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the leaves, the leaves are kind of coming out in opposite pattern. Hmm? Can you see another one that's in the mint family? 
It smell, it has a strong smell, has opposite leaves. Do you have a question, Billy? More of a funny comment. Um, some plant scientists said all plants are edible, but some are only edible once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very true. <laughs> The lavender is also in the mint family with the purple flowers. Do you see that one, Salvador? Yeah, that one's in the mint family as well. Um, so yeah, and then the next one we could go over is the parsley family. It has kind of a umbrella, like they're called umbrellas um, flowers. They kind of go out and go like this, like an umbrella. Yeah, you have one right there. Do you know what that one's called? It's called yarrow. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Queen Anne's lace. Okay. Yeah, that's Queen Anne's lace. That's a good one. Yep, those are ones too. Those are dill. That's not, that one's not one. Um, yeah. But the parsley family, also there are some poisonous plants in there, so you have to be careful because they're not all edible. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, this looks like too long for me. It's, Sorry. yeah. But it is. Do you know what it is? And it looks like a tree at the same time. If you, if you, if you guys have any more information, go. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean they only are edible once, right? Mm, yes. Some of them are, but like that, that's parsley right there. And so you can eat that. So that means you've eaten multiple times? Multiple, multiple times, times, yeah. Cilantro is also in that family, so that's oh, really good at observation of you. <laughs> okay. That family has... A lot of pollinator plants, bees and butterflies love that family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is okay. The next one is the mustard. Yeah, we're gonna talk about mustard. Um, but but it says mustard. Yeah, everybody's talking about mustard. There's one flower on the table that is in the mustard family. You might not guess. It's edible. It's a flower. It's brightly colored. Nope, not that one. <laughs> brightly colored. It's like, oh, you won't even say it's brighter. Even the brighter. Brightest colored. <laughs> yes, yep. that one, the nasturtium. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, that one's in the mustard family. It has four petals, four sepals, four tall stamens, and two short stamens. You can't make mustard out of that. Um, mustard is made from seeds. <laughs> yeah. But that one is in the mustard family. It kind of tastes mustardy if you taste it. That is rosemary. It's in the mint family. So mustard, mustard is like broccoli and kale and all of those are in the same. Um, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. <laughs> well, mustard is made from mustard seeds. This one has an extra petal. Oh, yeah? Five. Five leaf total. Oh, look at that. Maybe that's Doesn't why. It, so it, might have, it might be split. Nasturtiums are subcategorized differently than um, general mustards, and I think because it has some characteristics that are individual. Most of them have four petals, correct? Yes. Yeah, one of them might be like kind of a split one that looks like two, but is connected somewhere at the mm -hmm. base of it. Last time when I saw this uh, at Park, there was six. Wow. Six, six petals? petals? Yeah, six petals. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay, the next one is the yeah. pea family. It has irregular flowers. They're called, they have like a kind of two big ones that are called banner and then they have little wings and then a kneel at the bottom. There's one there. They have like beans and peas in them. Do you see there's one flower in front of you that's in that family. They're kind of small. Do you see it? Is it or this one? Nope, not that one. Definitely this one. Nope. It's kind of, it's kind of a weird one. They're really small and they're just the flowers. So we've talked a little bit about things in this family. Mm, um, that's lavender. Yep, that's it, right there. Wait, what? You know what things that is? Things in the lavender. pea family, they... Um, it's the fava beans. Yeah. Pea yep, that's them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> See how weird they are? <laughs> oh, 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 
that's okay. Mm-hmm. No. Are you still sexual or what? Okay. <laughs> 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 So pea family, they have big, open, big, um, fleshy leaves, and they um, they uh, trap nitrogen on their roots. So oh yeah, nitrogen fixers. Yeah, they're really helpful in the garden for that reason. Oh, all right, and okay, we have the rose family. Has five sepals, five petals, numerous stamens, serrated leaves. Can you see one on the table that's in the rose family? There you go, you got it. Yeah, you got it right there. Do you know what that is? A rose? <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a blackberry. Or it's a, or it's a raspberry, I took I to put my glasses on. Yeah, that, that's a blackberry. So apples are in this family, roses, lots of different kinds of berries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're actively turning into blackberries. We can see that later when we go outside. They're all starting to make little fruits. Yeah, got trimmed off. <laughs> They've paused. It's one of the last flowers out there because they're all kind of turning into berries right now. And then we've got one last family, the Aster family. Um, they're, they have like, they're kind of fun because they have all their, the, the middle of the flower is actually just tiny, tiny flowers. And then there's these outer petals that go around the outside. So like a sunflower, you know, sunflower seeds are just all in the middle of the flower um, because the flowers are all actually in the middle. It's the kind of weird. Um, but yeah, that's a that's in the Astra family right there. Yep. Come on. That's I can't tell what you have back there. I'm not sure. It's a strawberry. Oh, that, looks like a that one is an Astra. That's an Astra family with like the purple. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they also call it the Daisy family. I'm assuming you can't eat that one. What one? No, you can actually it's eat. pointy, but yeah, yeah you, can. you can eat. You can eat, you can eat some parts of it. You can eat the the petals of the flowers, and, and you can use the leaves for tea. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you guys can't eat spikes. Yeah, yeah, don't eat the spikes. So there's there's a ton more plant families. These are the common ones that we find in the in the vegetable garden. Um, some other ones that aren't in our textbook are the cucurbit family, so things like cucumbers and squash and pumpkins and um, watermelons, those are in the cucurbit family. Cucurbit. And then also tomatoes have their own family called Solanaceae family, and those are, a lot of them, it's the nightshade family, a lot of them are very poisonous to our bodies, but um, things like eggplant and tomatoes and peppers we can eat. And a lot of people can only eat them if they're cooked, um, kind of weakens their cellular structure, and then they're more digestible. So mm-hmm. potatoes are also in that family. Potatoes, fun. Potatoes. All right. Should we talk about annuals? Sure. So we've got three categories of plants, um, annuals, perennials, and biennials. Um, an annual plant are plants that grow from seed to a mature plant in one year. Um, In order to grow these plants, you have to plant a new seed every year. Um, But some annuals do self-seed, which means they'll like drop their own seeds after they're done flowering. So then they'll pop up the next year on their own. Um, Some of these are like corn, lettuce, peas, beans, some flowers. Perennials are plants that grow in the same place for three years or more and get bigger and stronger each season. So you just plant them once and then they keep growing. Um, These plants need to be pruned to keep them in shape and to encourage fruit and flower production. Some perennials can live for just a few years, but others can live for much longer. Yep, blueberries. Mm -hmm. And they grow grow more and more each year, which is great. Then you just plant them once then keeps giving. Yeah, they're still there. Um, herbs are like that. There's like lots of rosemary and, th- and thyme and, well, 
Yeah. Rosemary and lavender are it, all over the place. The what? The perennial? No, no, that's, that's the question that I asked. No, you said thyme, but what thyme? Thyme. <laughs> Wordplay. You don't even, you don't even have okay, and we have one more. It's called a biennial. So it lives for two years. They grow leaves and stems over the first year, and then they fruit, flower, and produce seed on the second year. And there are a lot of garden vegetables that are biennial, like beets, cabbage, carrots, celery, lettuce, onions, and parsley. Are you going to say anything about it? Yeah, so the biennials that we use in the garden, half, most of the time we harvest them in the first year. So like carrots and beets um, and cabbage, we harvest them. But if you left them one more year, that's when they would flower and produce seed. So for our purposes in the garden, we're, we're treating them like annuals. But if you wanted to collect seeds, you would treat them like biennials. So you'd let them go for two years. All right. Apple flowers. Um, so a couple of the flowers, well, a lot of them actually on the table are edible. Um, you can add them to your meals or you can put them on baked goods, um, but you always want to make sure that you know where your flowers are. You, you know, you don't just pick them off any, anywhere because you don't know people are treating their flowers. So if you grow them yourself at home, they're safe, but make sure they're not, I wouldn't just pick them off from anywhere. You don't know what's going on. Um, well, yeah, you could have dog pee on them. You could have pesticides on them. You could have all kinds of things on them. So um, I always advise students to ask first to make sure they can identify it correctly. And then if it's not at your house, ask, ask the person who's growing it if you can eat them, mm -hmm. just to make sure that there's not anything sprayed on them or that they've been treated in a, in a way that would make you sick. So always ask. Yes. Imagine putting dog pee covered ginger on garlic bread. That would be disgusting. That would be awful. <laughs> yeah, I typically stay away from herbs that are grown near a street or near below knee level for that reason. So you want to make sure that you're safe. Near a street, um, so there's a lot of oil and gas and things that splash up from streets, so it can be pretty dirty and you don't really want to eat that. Um, so some of the edible flowers um, that you might recognize are this one, allium, so like chives, leeks, and garlic. Um, all make cute little flowers and take any from outside, but there's some growing outside that we can taste right now. Um, some chive flowers. Um, you can eat them raw, you can pickle them, you can fry them, you can just put them as a garnish on things, um, and they're yummy. Nasturtiums are those orange flowers that we talked about earlier. They are in the mustard family, so they have like a little bit of a mustardy taste. You can put them on salads. Um, yeah, they're, they're really good and yummy. Calendula, they're those like, well, I think there might be one or two around. Um, they're like a golden flower. Um, you can eat those, you can eat the petals, you can put them in salads. Um, they're also used like and a lot of skincare products, like if you make like an oil with them, then they're like super good for your skin. Um, borage flowers, it's, I think we've tasted those a few times in the garden before. They're blue. I think there's a few on your table. They taste like cucumber and they're super tiny and little star shaped ones. Um, mint, which is in the mint family, of course. Um, those are, wait. That's a borage. Yeah, that's a borage flower, yeah. So those taste like cucumber and they're edible. Um, the mint family is, uh, you can eat those. You can put, some people put them in salads and stuff. You can also make a tea out of them. And then lavender, which is so good, like lavender ice cream, lavender. I mean, lavender is just so good. Yeah, I actually brought oh, I some that we're all going to try if you'd yes. like to try it. Yeah, it's really good. Awesome. Um, yeah. I like to use lavender to infuse flavor, but I don't like to eat it raw. It's pretty intense if you eat it raw. It is intense. <laughs> it's nice in a tea. What's that spice like mix that has lavender in it? Oh, oh. Um, Herbe de Provence. Herbe de Provence. It's very fancy and has lavender in it. Um, sometimes I put that on stuff. Um, 
roses. Roses are good. Roses are one of the ones that you want to ask before you eat, though, because um, a lot of people spray insecticides or pesticides on their roses. Why? Um, because they're susceptible to leaf spot. And um, so places like the Rose Garden, you don't see leaf spot because they spray them. Um, and it's kind of the only way to get rid of leaf spot. So most people will spray the roses. So Corn definitely bees. ask before mm. you eat those. Corn yeah. bees are also helping the plant, so helping the plants up are also well, not everything kills bees. There's the chemicals used to treat leaf spot is, some of them are kind of benign for killing, they don't kill bees, but um, you definitely don't want to ingest it at least. Try to get as natural as possible for things that you're eating. Squash, squash blossoms are edible and they're so cute. This is a squash blossom. Has anyone ever had squash blossoms, stuffed squash blossoms? I'm guessing these are squash before they become squash. Yep. Yes. So there's a male and a female squash flower. Um, male and female? The female one is the one that produces fruit. So if you can try it, I can show you outside. We can look for the difference between the male and female flower. But um, the one you want to eat is the male one because then you're not um, losing the fruit, the pumpkin or squash or um, that it would create. So, yes. <laughs> Here my with the, the pumps. My dog made a little Miss Squash Blossom. Aww, Aww. that's cute. <laughs> a little Squash Blossom maker. Aww, that's cute. So in a lot of cultures, Squash Blossom is, is pretty common to eat. Stuffed with cheese and breadcrumbs and stuff. They're really delicious. Oh yeah, looks so good. Putting like rice or cheese in there. Yeah. So we, ta we talked about this a little bit, but... Um, yeah, depending on when you take the flowers, they can taste a little different. Um, you want to harvest them in the morning or the late afternoon so they're not, they don't fade or wilt. Um, inspect them for any kind of, you know, weird stuff. Definitely ask before you eat them, of course. And then you want to clean them off before you eat them as well. Um, you can keep them fresh by spreading them out, bloom face down. Um, on a towel and refrigerating them overnight, um, or you could just put them in glass filled with water. I don't want to like look at this really. <laughs> We're gonna do a little guessing game, but it's pretty in we're pretty involved this one. Yeah, it's too intense. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you definitely want to look for bugs when you're picking flowers too. Um, I made the mistake of eating a stink bug on a. The other day, and it was disgusting. Oh, yeah. Thank you for asking. Why don't you do that? Because it was camouflaged to the to the flower, and I didn't see it. So definitely make sure you're looking before you just throw it in your mouth. Ugh, it was terrible. They call it stink bug for a reason. Ew, no, it stinks. Does anyone know what this picture is? Yeah, so you can you can see the commonness um, to the rose um, with the flower that has the same kind of rose shape as a as a simple um, petaled rose, and then this is the process of it getting more and more ripe until it turns red. On every vacation, oh my God, home, there's someone like you who reunited the.
from a brand new strawberry. But that was a cool video. <laughs> that was a cool video. <laughs> we but use our imagination. That was a cool video. So that's everything. Cool. I don't think that video is fake. It was real. I didn't bring many. Oh. Um, I don't think I have the same adapter, though. What, for this? Oh, you have an older one? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Oh, you out of juice? No, no, um, to hook it up to the thing to look at. But it's going to do a little. Oh, does this one work? HDMI. is the daisy or aster family does anyone know what this is this is uh, chamomile so we've been collecting this to make tea with next week so this is one of the Oops. sorry oh my gosh wait never mind that's gonna make it more awesome but it turns out I can't actually make it more awesome here you go <laughs> just tiny this Has anyone seen that before? This is one of the first flowers that you'll see in the springtime. Dandelion. Is that what you said? Nice. Yeah, it's a highly pixelated dandelion. It's, it's a really terrible image of a dandelion. But how is this one different than the aster that's on your table? Yeah, so you can see... What Delia was saying is in the aster family, saying is in the aster family how the, the flowers are actually not the petals, it's like what's in the middle. Um, you can see that really clearly on a dandelion. So that has the petals in the middle, so you can kind of see it's a little more representative of, of having those petals and stuff in the middle. And then the outer petals are also there just like the, here's some other things. Um, thistles, another one. Sunflowers, we already talked about that. Aster is really great. All right. We didn't get too much into this Whoa. one, but this is the cucurbit family. So things like squash and cucumbers. Um, they all have these big, giant, fleshy leaves that have little hairs on them. They're really hard to tell apart when they're little. These are all cucumbers in that family. When they're small, even when they get a little bigger, it's hard to tell what they are, but some trail and some are more of a bush. So um, here's some other things in that family. Lots of different kinds of squash. There's so many kinds of squash. And did you know all of them are not edible? Um, so when squash plants cross with each, with each other, which they do pretty readily, um, Sometimes they can create something that's poisonous. So if you ever have a squash that tastes very, very bitter, I would say don't eat it because um, eating a large quantity of it can turn into poison in your body. So. Is there a way to tell besides um, the taste? Uh, taste is the biggest factor, but that's pretty much the only 
way. Um, and is it just from them like being planted too close to each other, or like? Yeah, it's from cro it's from cross pollinization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if you are collecting seeds, what you'd want to do is like keep them really isolated. And one way you can do that is hand pollinating the flowers and then using a rubber band to close them up. So you know that the fruit that you get, which you take seeds from, is a pure variety. So um, a cucumber can cross in and it can create like a whole nother species and it could be edible, but you're really not sure. So you got to be a little careful with those. Um, so that's one selling point for getting packets of seeds instead of collecting your own seeds from this family. Because then you kind of are assured that you're getting what you intend to plant. Um, this is what their little flowers look like. And we'll look outside and we'll look at the difference between the male and female flowers like we were talking about. So the ones that you'd want to eat versus, you can eat both, but you'll just, um, you'll get a squash or a pumpkin if you keep the female flowers intact. Zucchini. Zucchini is pickled as... Some lavender chocolate. Zucchini and pickles are two pickles all the same, right? Yep, they're all in the same family. Zucarbit. Okay, the mint family. So as we said, they have the square mm -hmm. stems, with bilateral leaves that and then their flowers are mm -hmm. kind of interesting. They, they kind of look like little, like little cups. Mm -hmm. And uh, insects love this family. So do bees, uh, bees and hummingbirds. Um, lavender is part of that family. And a lot of medicinal herbs are part of, and you can eat all of them. Um, is lemon come from a mint family, or is it just a specific plant? Lemon balm. Yeah, lemon balm. So there's bee balm, lemon balm. When when the word balm is in there, it's it's typically from the mint family. Um, see, here's an example of the flowers. It's really small though. Here's a better one. Um, so you can see they're kind of like this funny cup shape. Like lavender rose chocolate. And if you eat those flowers, they're in a little bit of like a honey flavor. They're really interesting to eat. Okay, mustard family. Does anyone remember what's in the mustard family? Kale, broccoli, arugula, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Lots of things that we eat. They're also called cruciferous vegetables sometimes, or coal vegetables. Coal, C O L E. So we're going to see a lot of the, um, we'll see a lot of the seeds in the garden. You guys have probably have already seen seeds that look like these. Hold on, let me make this a little bigger. These little like sticks that come off. We saw some of those. I think we even, yeah, we have some saved back there. Um, and they have like white or yellow flowers. So when we go out in the garden, we're going to like try to find something from each of these families and see if we can identify them. Aww. Here's some kale. Here's some of their flowers. So if you let a broccoli go to flower, it's going to look like this. Or if you let kale go to flower, they all look very, very similar when they're in flower. Oops, that's not one. Here's a broccoli. So this broccoli got overripe and is starting to actually turn into a flower. The broccoli that we eat is the flower that hasn't opened up yet. So if we just let it go a little longer, it opens up and has these yellow flowers. And there's also a place like deeper in the forest where you can find it. And then, uh, all right, here's the parsley family with the um, umbrella type flowers. So some of the things in the parsley family is celery, um, carrots, parsnips, lovage. Um, so giant hogweed and hemlock, and uh, those are some of the poisonous ones. And so you do have to be really careful, especially here in Oregon, because if we go out into the forest, you're going to see something that looks a whole lot like the, um, 
this guy, this Queen Anne's lace. There's a lot of these. Be careful because they're super poisonous. And one way you can tell Queen Anne's lace is it has a little dot of red in the Anne's lace. There's a legend that Queen Anne was making lace and pricked her finger and put a dot of blood in the middle. Um, Hemlock also has a stripe down the stem. Um, there's a couple other ways you can tell them apart, but this is one you have to be really careful with. Um, Question, is it just poisonous if you eat it? Um, some things like cow parsnip and giant hogweed, they're um, solar. So if you get the, the juice or sap on your skin and then are exposed to sun, it can burn your skin. So, so like you have to hide in like trees and stuff? Um, you just kind of want to not brush up against it. And if you do, you want to wash off your skin pretty quickly because it's kind of it becomes like acid. Um, mm -hmm. It's also like deadly if you eat it. So don't eat do it. Do not eat it. <laughs> um, <laughs> do not eat it. Um, there's also wild carrot that you'll see a lot of times around. Um, it's not poisonous, but it looks a whole lot like carrot. People tend to grow it, and then they realize it's never going to make a carrot. So, um, but it is like a pollinator plant. Dill, fennel, caraway. Cilantro, those are all in the same family too. Anise. Um, and if you see them in the garden, especially right now, they'll be covered in insects. They don't just attract bees, they attract all kinds of insects. They're a really, really beneficial pollinator plant. This is mostly what they look like. They have kind of the same leaf and flower structure. Um, cilantro has the same flower structure, but on like kind of a tiny, tiny scale. Um, versus this where it's all pretty compact, creates like a flat bed. Yeah, if I was a bug, I'd want to hang out on that. Yeah. It seems awesome. <laughs> you and all your friends meet up on the flower. <laughs> the anise, anise is, is that what licorice flavor comes from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, this is in the pea family. Has anyone seen these on the side of the room? It's pink. Pea pea flowers. I think they're so cool. They're everywhere right now. Those are wild peas, sweet, sweet peas. Um, not all pea flowers are edible. Sweet peas, which people grow because they're really smell, they smell really nice. They're very poisonous. So we want to make sure we can identify those correctly because the pods look very similar to the peas that you can eat. So do the flowers. Um, so you can eat snap peas, snow peas but not sweet peas. I get my, my other dog's middle name is Sweet Pea. You have some really cute dog names. <laughs> Here's what the pea seeds look like. Everyone's yeah. seen those, I'm sure. We probably won't see many peas um, going in the garden. They don't really like to grow when it's hot. There will probably be some fava beans out there. Um, I think last week, Andreas, didn't you pick some fava beans last um, week? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. They were probably this big last week. I bet they're like even bigger this week. Um, they grow really fast and then they kind of, once it gets really hot, like right now, they kind of taper off. Um, clover is another really, really, really great beneficial um, member of the pea family. So clover is really awesome. It covers the ground and keeps things moist. Um, and it's, it's uh, fixing nitrogen for the plants around it. So. What that means is that it's taking nitrogen out. Yeah, there's indigo and false indigo. And then lupin, which is a uh, native plant around here, that's in the pea family too. Not edible. And finally, the rose family. So this is a, this looks like a pear flower. It's also in the same family. Strawberry flower, you can see how similar they look. Raspberries and blackberries are part of this family, as it is thimbleberries and same berries, two of our native berries. Um, this is a nucta rose, looks like. Okay. And you can see the similarities between apples and rose hips. So these are rose hips, which are a little part of the rose. Um, and they kind of look like little tiny apples, but with long, um, those are the uh, leaves that surrounded the flower. 
All right. That's all I have for that. So one thing we're going to do before we leave. Um, so we talked about the cucurbit family and how similar they are. And as an example of that, I think we should open up these seeds and see how similar the seeds look. So let's see. Where should we do this so that it's on camera? So do you guys want to open this packet? Open this one. Here, Rory, do you want to open this one? <laughs>
And we can stand in the sprinklers because it's really hot today. <laughs> you did? Good. Sign of a healthy good. habitat. <laughs> yeah. All right, come over here. Let's see if we can identify what some of these are. Does anyone remember what this is? That felt refreshing. Is this, yeah, I bet it did. Do you remember what this fennel. one is? Fennel. Fennel, yeah. What family is that in? Anyone remember? You can eat it. The fennel family. You can. It's in the parsley family. Those umbrella leaves. Look at all the, do you see all the little insects? These aren't bees, but look at these little guys, the little hoverflies coming in here. I know there aren't any insects on this, so. There you go, go for it. And what about this one behind here? This is probably the only bee, the only pea thing that's gonna be fruiting and flowering right now. This is the um, fava bean. And you can see some of the little flowers here. They are edible. Um, you can eat the flowers. Edible more than once. These are the, edible. yeah, these are the beans, the fava peas. Um, and you'd probably want to cook them first. They can be a little rough on the belly if you don't cook them first. Um, how about this one? Does anyone remember what this one is? Chives, yeah. And these are really delicious little tiny flowers. Try, try a flower. Yeah. Can you flower. can eat the whole thing of these, yeah. Like, you, you, eat, you eat flour? Yeah, the flowers are really delicious. And look, th this flower has started to go to seed. Um, you can kind of see the little black seeds in there. Here's one. Does anyone want to collect some seeds? There's the seeds. And some flower petals. Yeah, and some flowers. So maybe we can ask Betsy where we can sprinkle those new seeds. Who's Betsy? Um, with the hat on right there. Okay. Here's something in the in the mint family. Those fuzzy little guys. Spicy. Here, let's let's skip over the watery part. Uh oh, we got a bee sting. Um, let's skip over here. Yeah, so Betsy, Betsy grows a lot of these things for the food pantry here, which is really awesome. Okay. Yeah, we gotta. We just gotta give them their space. Betsy said I could plant these anywhere. Anywhere? Sweet. Okay. Where do you want to plant them? Maybe. There are an awesome pollinator plant, so yeah, throw them in there. Can I just <laughs> them anywhere? I <laughs>
lot of chefs nice. use those sprinkled on. You did with my friend? Oh, cute. You want to taste them? Yeah, I'll try them. Why not? But, oh. What is this one? Um, Kalenja, which is in a lot of like beauty products. Wait, what is this one? Like, 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 the blue one? Uh, the <laughs> yellow one. Um, a lot of flavor. No? no, they do a lot of edible. So important, so you don't. Thanks, me. Here's another edible flower. Pansies. Onion. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow. Oh, it's, it looks like someone already picked it. Is this a pea? That's a fava bean. Okay. These are another edible flower, everybody. These are pansies. They come in a lot of colors. There's a purple one, they have yellow. Um, really cute and edible and fun. You want to try that one? There's some more if anyone wants to try. Try one? What does it taste like? I mean, flowers don't typically have a lot of flavor. Some have like yeah. cucumber flavor, some have like a spicier flavor, but typically they're not too much. Let's see. That one, that one has like a little bit of a florally flavor, I guess. What do you think? How would you describe that? It doesn't really taste like anything but... Hmm. So here's some seeds from a. Yeah, sorry. There you go. Here's some some of the um, brassicaceae, the uh, mustard family. This is something in the mustard family. This is what all the seeds will look like. Do you eat the whole thing or just the petals? Um, you can eat the whole thing. I just like the petals because the rest can get a little like textured. Let's see. How about this one, you guys? Anyone recognize this? I think they're in the bathroom. Can anyone recognize this one? What one? The that one? What family that's in? Greens? No. It was in the back rooms. Bathrooms. And the back Anybody? Room. See if you can smell it and identify it from the smell. Not the back rooms as in the yellow creepy Or the, from the seeds, what even. The back rooms? What those are the Not seeds? those back rooms. Um, which one? Uh, those little red stems. Oh, those are strawberries. So flowers. this is cilantro. So this is in the parsley family too. And remember what I was Stop. saying? The flowers look the same, but they're just like on a smaller oh, scale than the, um, the larger ones we looked at in class. Mm -hmm. But you. all parts of this are edible. I love these flowers. I put these on my salad. They're so tasty. Why? These actually have a flavor. They, they're like a cilantro flavor. Um, let's go over here to the, there's no more snap peas. It's too hot for them. Um, let's go over to the squash and see if we can see the difference between the male and the female flower. So look at look at this flower compared to this flower. Everybody come a little closer. Are these tall ones like corn or something? Yeah, these are corn. Alright, come check it out everyone. 
and get a little closer. Where's, where's Rory? Are they in the bathroom? Come a little closer. Come a little closer. I can't. I can't show you guys without coming closer. Camera. Oh, okay. You got, he's not getting you. He's just getting the plant. Look, you guys. Come on. Come on. So, in. this is a female flower. Come check it out. You can see the center, and look. Look on the back side. The female one's creating the squash. You can see it starting right here. See, so that's the female flower. We don't want to eat that one because then we won't have a squash. But if you look at this one, it looks a little different. It has a different, yet. Yeah, yes, let's see. So this is a male flower. It has just the pollen and no fruit on the back side. So that's the one you'd want to eat. Leave, yeah. You want that one? I don't like to eat them raw. I like to eat them kind of cooked with cheese inside, but cooked you can it. Oh yeah. Those? Duffed blossoms, yes. What? They're amazing. You can eat the spikes. What kind of cheese? Can it just be any kind of cheese? Like what do you put? What do you What use? kind is it? How do you think it is? Um like it's like a Mexican thing, right? So what like Oaxacan cheddar and Monterey Jack. You can put pretty much anything, but I think really? like the traditional way is, isn't it like Oaxacan cheese or something? I think so. That's super cool. Look at this over here. It's totally transformed in I the know, last couple weeks. It is. <laughs> it's so nuts. Nice. Wow. Notice that the other types of them have like more trees. What? Say that again. The other, uh, I think the female ones have like more trees. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. So the female ones are are the ones that are receiving the pollen. So they have more little spots to take the pollen up. Oop. And oh, the pollen's cool. created on the male. Oh, and you can cool. see the, yeah. the female one has the fruit. Cool. Yeah. I know, they're very, very <laughs> polleny. Wipe it on the plant. I bet if we looked inside here, we could probably find some squash and zucchini too, yeah. like last week. Yeah, yeah I haven't been through. She's That's looking for Rory, I believe. She went to the restroom and then didn't come back. So she's searching. Should I take this off? We're gonna do some harvesting with Miss Betsy. All right. Harvest with me. You guys are gonna Harvest like it. Work. Come on over. We're gonna harvest. I still have a question. Where did yeah. Rory go? Um, do you like find her? She's looking for her. I think she went to the restroom. No way. She hmm? went to the back no. room? The She'll back be here. Room. The back room. So come no. with me, guys. Let's go check out some fava beans. And you can harvest. Room, and I'll show you guys where room. some berries are, too. Let's go, let's go. Bathroom, restroom. Let's harvest, you guys. Come with me, please. Do you guys want to see if we can find some zucchini before we go harvest fava beans? Come on, let's go. Nick, come. We can stay in the shade. Let's go over and look for zucchini. They won't, they won't bother you, I promise. That's not true. They're just trying to try all this. Well, he probably had his hand in a flower. Come, I'll show you. We'll see if we can find any squash. We can stay in the perimeter too and just observe. Where the bees are. Sure, that's where the bees are. <laughs>
you can eat them raw. They taste a little bit starchy. Um, or you can cook them. You can put them in soups. You can put them in stir fries. You can use them in anything you would use any other bean in, really. Can we and use coffee? Can we eat a bowl? Coffee. Can we you can. Bowl? You can. It won't hurt you. But this is like doesn't have a great texture for chewing. Like it's a little too fibrous. So here's how you tell if a fava bean is ripe. Kind of pinch that one. You know how it's kind of. Is that kind of hard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, compare it to this one. See how soft that one is? Yeah. So you can feel when the beans are fully developed inside of the pod just by feeling how how much harder that is versus how much squishier this one is. I, I like think this one's ripe. So that's the squishy one that's not ripe. Also oh, the squishy one that's I not think ripe. It broke. Yeah, that's all good. Okay. So we're gonna take the ones that are ripe and we're gonna put them in the harvester. Consume. For this plant, um, you'll notice that some of the branches break kind of easy. Um, that's okay. What you what you want to do is you find one that's ripe, and you just grab it and kind of pull it down straight towards the base of the plant. Okay. All so right. everybody can have a harvest bag, and you can this just is a good absolutely one, right? go for it. Yeah. There you go. What do you think? I like them cooked. They're kind of funny. There's a whole bunch of fava beans all over the garden, so we can spread out a little bit. Can I add these to your bag? Shoop. Ooh, thank you. Ones. Here you go. More. Seven. So all the ones that are hardened are ripe, right? Yeah. And we can leave them and let them get really, really big. I like to let them get like massive because I like to grill them. They're really fun to eat that way. Bunch on this one. <laughs> oh, I wasn't, you didn't have to do that. I was just showing you how many I had. Okay. Right, we'll work together. I'll keep adding to your event. Okay, you can still pop it in there because they'll get um, processed before anyone eats them, anyways. Yeah, I'm gonna get in the, in the water. Can I add some to your bag? Oh, yeah. Lots of them. Let's see who can find the biggest bean. Right now, I think there's the longest. There's some hidden over here that are giant. They're humongous. I don't know how you can save money on grocery shopping. How? Grow your own food? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a pack of seeds is way less expensive than one Buy tomato, a lot of right? Buy and build your own farm so that in case of an apocalypse happens and when the economy just just uh, poops their pants, yeah, that's you what can, I'm saying. you're ready. That's what I'm saying. Guess how many acres you need to feed a family of four? 
Probably not that much. <laughs> not that all much. One do, acre. All you have to do is put like a, like like two stories. Like like after this one, put another story, and then another one, and so on. Stories? You mean like? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, like like so this is the first. So this is the ground. Mm-hmm. All I have to do is like is, is like build like, some wood and then and put some more. Uh, uh, beds up there. Yeah. Well, how would the bed. how would the ones on the bottom get sun? This is why you have light. <laughs> well, one way you can do that is is grow successionally. So you grow some winter crops and some fall crops, and mm -hmm. then you're constantly having something growing, and you can preserve it and save it for the whole year. Well, I'm, I don't have a very good food source, but I have a good water source. There you go. I live by a river. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, perpetual water. My dad's trying to figure out how to, uh, how to like build something that can like purify the water so that we can get it and use it for drinking. Wow, that's really cool. What river do you live by? Uh, Whitaker Park. Whitaker Park? Yeah. Oh, Whitaker Pond? Yeah. I love Whitaker Pond. Do you go there a lot? Well, we're like really busy all the time. Yeah. I mean, my mom and dad don't really have much time. Uh, my my dog has a bad leg, so I can't really walk. I can't really take him to walk anywhere. Yeah. I'm in the radius of the water. It feels so good. So small, but Woo. bright. Small, but bright. Yeah, the, the bigger, the longer you leave them on there, the bigger they'll get and the more seeds they'll get. But look at these. These are cute little cucumbers growing up here. These are little tiny, um, they're, they're, we call them fairy cucumbers. They're like this big. They're so cute. Have you had them before? Oh, fava beans. We had, we had green beans. Yeah. Fava beans are kind of an interesting one. Feels so good. I don't want to ruin my this thing though. I ended up making. Oh, you know what? I think I sold out of them, but I ended up making um, snickerdoodle with the uh, Marionberry ice cream oh sandwiches. Oh my god! You sold them? Yeah, on Saturday was my two-year anniversary at my store. Well, well, for my businesses, so I had a little event at my store. What store? So made, what, what, what? Back up. Hold on a second. Yeah. What do you make? Uh, so I make ice cream treats and desserts, and then I also have a clothing brand, Shea Butter Brand, and then Shea Bee's Ice Cream. What? So, yeah, I start. Again, I'll try to bring you guys some samples. Or, or if you, you have social media? Yeah. Yeah, follow me on uh, Instagram. It's on right here. Let's see. No. That's she, was, all. she was giving you so much good info. I too. know, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, she doesn't have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you want to ask me some more questions? Yeah, can you start <laughs> sure. Up about how your favorite way to prepare fava beans. Yeah, my favorite way to prepare fava beans would be a dish called ful mudama, which is a Middle Eastern food that has favas and tahini and lemon juice and onions and tomatoes and spices in it. Um, I also like to shell them and put them in stir fry.
I would just shell them and throw them right in a stir fry, just like with any of your denser vegetables, like cauliflower and broccoli. Um, yeah. huh? You brought the syrup? No. No. Yeah. Is that yeah. the process thing or not? No, they're whole beans. They're whole beans. Yeah, so they're whole cooked beans. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Nice job, you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to hear something So I need to move the um, sprinkler, and I can just turn it off and wait till we're done. That might be smarter. I see that we're plugged in here. I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> we don't want, I don't want to electrocute anybody. <laughs> Not today, guys, not today. Wet. I don't think so. It's okay. Not wet. All right, does anyone want to come find a zucchini? Let's go find zucchinis. Zucchini inside. Just inside time, no worry. If you want to sit in the shade, you're welcome to sit in the shade. Fava. All right, the first person to find a zucchini wins the prize of the day. So they're green or yellow? Oh, sure. Um, I have lollipops. So zucchini will come from one of the ones that has the yellow flowers. I see one from here. They're either green or white. Sometimes can be white. Zucchinis are really to like move the leaves around. Here's a squash. Oh, yeah, it looks like a squirrel got that one. Let's see if we can find one. You did win. That was you found one over there? Oh, yeah, look at those yellow squash. Oh, my gosh, look at that. Yeah, that's a squash. That might be a zucchini that's just gotten really, really big. Or it could be a pumpkin that's on its way to getting the right size. There's some yellow squash. If you want to pick a yellow squash, there's one right over there. Oh yeah, there's cute ones. I like to pick them when they're that size because the bigger they get, the more like tough they get. So if you want to pick it, you just give it a little twist. Nice. Woohoo! I love squash. Do you want to pick that one over there? It's a little bit bigger. You might have to walk around the out, outside edge. This is about the time that zucchini start coming and then you'll just find like giant ones all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> is this a pumpkin or a zucchini that's here? I think that's a pumpkin. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. You see it? <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> so cute. I didn't, I haven't, that's the first thing I've seen. Adorbs. Right here. Oh. You can see the flower kind of flopping off there. Yeah. Ooh, lots of fava. Lots yeah. of guava beans over here. Oh my gosh, so many fava beans. There so many fava beans. Look at this cute little bean traveling up there. So cute. <laughs> Pull that Taking it I down. Was to think of like maybe I need to make some little trellises to kind of support it because it's, <laughs> it's yeah. too big for the. Do you see this? Crawling up it 
and flopping it over. Yeah, oh. so we are growing so corn, beans, and squash all together in this garden because they all support each other and they're a traditional way of growing these foods that's been grown in the southwest of North America for probably around 9,000 years. And the thing is that you usually want to plant your beans when your corn is already knee high because them at the same time the beans will actually pull the corn down. So I'll come in and put some trellises in here uh, to support the bean growth. But our other ones, like over here, this bean will probably end up not pulling this corn down because the corn's big enough. They're pretty fun. A bamboo right there. Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Take Super that in. Cabbage. <laughs> Yeah, and then those are um, what's left left of the camas seed pods. Oh, cool! So I did a harvest of those. But, oh, awesome! And then there's a sacred white sage coming. Yeah, too. awesome. Yeah. What is this one? A mallow? I think so. That's part of a wildflower mix. Nice. Yeah. This will. Ooh, likey. Yeah, I've got some blackberry issues. <laughs> See any more? I love finding a giant green zucchini. This is my, oh my gosh, it's one so of my fun. joys. <laughs> yeah. Cute little bug. I don't think they're ladybugs. I think these are potato bugs. I think you got some some little pest bugs here. See those guys? Oh yeah. Look at that! Hi, friend! Look at those fun spots it has. Isn't it cool how they're all... Are there like any bugs that mimic ladybugs? That mimic them? Yeah. Those ones that I just pointed out are very similar looking. Did you see those ones? They're like yellower though. Um, I'm sure there's something. Bug book for that. For Do you one? know of any bugs that mimic ladybugs? I don't. I'm sure there must be something though. Yeah. yeah. There's these little yellow, I think they're potato bugs. They all just grew right up. We're in here. It's weird that they'd be on the, <laughs> the corn plant. That was That's a little surprising. Corn. Corn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, what's your guys' timeline for? We have another hour. You have I another hour? Okay. We're losing steam though. Well, if we can get them doing some more harvesting. Yeah. We can do different kinds of harvesting too. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Here for a oh, awesome. Hi. I'm Danny. Yeah. Hi, I'm Amber. Hi, Amber. Nice Amber. to meet Hi, I'm you. Hi, Betsy. Hi. Nice What's to meet you. Name? Betsy. Betsy Bernie? Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you too. How are the kids doing the picking stuff for? Yeah, yeah. we've yeah. been doing some harvesting and um, all kinds of fun stuff out here. They're they're losing steam in the sun a little bit, which happens to us all. <laughs> I know, it's a little <laughs> pre-lunch and hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were How's learning the about the... temperature? Oh, it's good in there. Yeah. 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 We got some, some folks at older schools and that's always hard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, too hot or too cold. No, this, this building is awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome, your garden. My Thanks. God, it was prolific. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's amazing, right? Yeah. We were just learning about plant families and identification, and then they just harvested some things for the food pantry. Yeah, yeah. Betsy's got a lot of really cool stuff going on here. Yeah, so what's, what's the plan for the afternoon? Um, I'm not sure. For our class? Yeah. Um, so we, they break for lunch pretty soon and then um, go to robotics, but we're going to go back in the class. We're going to do a little seed comparis comparison and... Um, we compared like flower types earlier, and yeah. so yeah, got some basic knowledge on that for them. Yeah. yeah. Have you had any like skeptical students who like are like now really into it or? Um, yeah, a lot of them. I feel like they pretend that they're not, and then they really suck it up, and it's really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's mostly junior high, right? For the most part, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think there's one tenth grader. Um, we've had six takes.
Yes. Chives. Oh, that they like. Oh, no, oh that they liked it. Okay. Lavender. Yeah, I was like, what uh, class are they in? No, 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 he loved it. He loved it. They were yeah, like so there it. are berries, and I'll show you oh, where they are. Um, like, I even found those. Yeah, we've been doing some really fun hands-on really stuff. I think that's helpful for the yeah. kids, too, to like awesome. yeah, learn and then cool. come out. Show them to you, and then you can go back and get them. You love golden raspberries? Yes. So these are golden raspberries, um, and you kind of have to work for them to get in there, but you can see them. This. Yes, I have these in my back. Yes, red raspberries over here. Okay, um, and then. If you poke around back here on the in this garden bed, you might find some strawberries. There are just a few left in there. I'd get in there if you want to get one. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, these are these are ever uh, these are thornless blackberries that are not invasive, but they're not ready yet, so they will not taste good if we eat them. Um, and then there are Marion berries too, which I can show you guys down here. But probably the place where you're going to find the most berries today. Strawberry bed, no, red raspberries, and golden raspberries there. Oh my gosh, Marion berry pie is amazing. Um, would you like me to take your harvest bags? I'd suggest just eating the berries. They're just best to eat fresh. Are you being accosted by fava beans? <laughs> Anybody else want me to take their fava bean harvest bag? There we go. Yes, <laughs> please. Thank you. Nice job, you guys. This is great. Um, ooh, good, good find on the strawberries. Um, so yeah, again, golden raspberries down here, red raspberries here, and strawberries over here. Um, let me get you a bag. Golden ones. I bet there's some in the inner sections. Rory, do you want to try any? Oh, wow. Where do you find those? Nice. You have to do a little search for the good strawberries. Everyone gets those pretty. So last week we learned about pollinators. We added to the pollinator house oh, yeah. up there. Uh -huh. It was pretty fun. Yeah, and it's pretty cool to observe week to week. So much is going on, yeah. you know, that changes every week. So it's fun for everyone. Over here. No, I mean, like, I know where the fruit is. Kind of what we're, we're learning. Do you want to um, do some identification with me? Um, See if we can. Raspberries, raspberries. Mm -hmm. You probably recognize tomatoes. Strawberries oh, over there. Can I give you this? Uh, yes. Yeah, sweet. 